Shalom. Call Halayim Yahweh Bashim Yoshai Bashim Rahaka Kadash. All praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, in the names of the Holy Spirit, Chakadash. I'm doing this video here with the Akim and the Zaquan of the uh, Great Millstone San Francisco Bay Area Camp. And the video is about the Kingdom of Heaven. And the scripture I'm going to bring out is Luke 17, verse 20. Luke 17 and 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of the Most High should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of the Most High cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of the Heavenly Father is within you. In the kingdom, it starts with the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Okay? Of course, the kingdom of heaven is coming when Yahweh Shai returns. But as of right now, it's within us. Why? Because we have this word within us. And what do we do? We share it amongst the Akim and the brotherhood freely. Okay? And the Lord, when he said that, if this is my kingdom, my servants will fight. His kingdom is really not of this realm right now. But soon it will be. But as of right now, the kingdom is within us. And I believe it says in Romans, the kingdom of the Most High is not meat or drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And that's what we get from this truth, this wisdom, this knowledge that we get from the Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. The words of the scriptures, the holy scriptures. And the kingdom of heaven is within us, the elect, the 144,000, okay, the one third of the nation of Israel. The people, Jerusalem, right, is a people before of its place. And the kingdom of heaven is also the same. It's within us. And when the Lord establishes the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be within us, but we're going to establish it on this earth. Shalom, it's the brother Shemayim, and I got 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which the Most High hath prepared for them that love him. Alright? So the kingdom of heaven, man, is going to be far beyond anything we can ever imagine. Alright? As it is written, it says, I have not seen. All right, so the things that we perceive here on the earth, all right, the different uh, marvelous, you know, uh, creatures that's here on the planet, they're innumerable amount of creatures. All right, well, that's nothing compared to the things that Yahweh Shem Al Shai has in store, all right, for uh, the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect. All right, it says, I have not seen nor ear heard. All right, uh, there's going to be music, all right, different frequencies, all right, of music and instruments. All right, that are going to be uh, uh, created in the kingdom of heaven, man. All right. It says, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which the Most High hath prepared for them that love him. All right. In the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be operating on a super high level. All right. First and foremost, we're going to have immortal bodies. All right. So our vision receptors, our sense of touch, we're going to have better equipped sensories. All right. If that makes sense. All right. We're going to be able to feel and really have a 100% feel on how the earth is going to be, man. We're going to be able to have better hearing, better sight, better taste, all right? Our taste receptors, all right? Because we're going to have an immortal body. We're not going to be operating, all right, with this uh, mortal flesh, all right? Everything is limited, okay? Halfway going blind, all right? You, you can barely taste the food, all right? Well, in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be operating on a higher level so we're gonna get the full experience of life man all right and i want to end it off all right with this quick precept to follow up with that this is ecclesiasticus chapter 43 and 32 there are yet hid greater things than these be for we have seen but a few of his works all right so just all the innumerable magnificent things that are on the earth the different animals the different plants all right the different herbs all right the different vegetables are the different, you know, uh, foods that we can eat, flowers that we can smell and see, 
All right, this is just a few of Yahabah Shemal Shai's work. All right, because the power of Yahabah Shemal Shai is infinite. All right, so there's infinite possibilities, and the nation of Israel is going to be able to explore those infinite possibilities. You know, once we receive the kingdom. So, Shalom. Shalom. This is the bro Yatabia wa Allah. And, uh, you know, one of the, the biggest questions that the disciples and the apostles had in the ancient times, you know, was if we forsake everything and basically if we were to put it in the back burner, you know, put it to the side and put this truth first, you know, and present our bodies a living sacrifice and go out there on the highways and hedges, what are we going to get? What are we going to get for putting all this work in, you know? Which is a valid question, you know, we, we go in there week in and week out, we do the videos, we do the work, you know, we want to know, you know, what, what can we expect, you know, which is a valid question, you know, but I'm going to get the scripture, this is Mark chapter 10 and verse 28, it says, Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. So Peter's asking, you know, we have, we've left everything we had and we're following you. Verse 29, and Yahweh answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, and the gospels, verse 30, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. So basically, you know, us putting these things to the side, you know, the houses, the land, the wives, our children, you know, our families, putting that in the back seat and putting the truth in the front seat, you know, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and this gospel and running with it, you know, we can expect an increase, an a hundredfold increase, you know, so if you had, you know, for example, Esau's term, an acre, you know, you'll get a hundred acres, but more because the increases we're going to receive are going to be innumerable, you know? So, we have a wife, you know? You get a hundred wives, hundredfold wives, innumerable amount of wives you're going to have. Children, it says we're going to have many children, you know, basically. It says as, as a small one will be a big nation, you know? So we're going to have thousands upon thousands of kids. That's going to be the hundredfold increase, you know? Lands. You know, from here to the eye can see, you know, on different planets, you know, and then most importantly, it says in that very last part, let me read it again. It says, and in the world to come eternal life. So we're going to have that eternal life that we never decay. We never get corrupted, you know, because we're going to have the law in us. We're not going to have to go preach. We're not going to have to preach to our fellow brethren. You know, we're going to have that law in us. So we're going to be able to enjoy our increase. We're going to be able to enjoy our land, our wives, our children. You know, we're going to be able to enjoy it to the utmost. And it's going to be beautiful, you know. Uh, but this was just a valid question that the disciples have. And we, we also have in this time. But know that if we keep on the path and we keep doing this work and we keep presenting our bodies a living sacrifice and keep putting this truth first, you know, we'll get an increase and a hundredfold increase. And that's what we strive to get. All right, Shalom. This is the brother Shamar, and the scripture that I want to go into is Second Peter's three and thirteen, and it says, "Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, because we know in this earth that we dwell in it now, all right, there's no righteousness here. It's the complete opposite." All right, in the, the world that we're in right now, what do you see around you? You see nothing but wickedness, perverseness, and it's all thanks to the so-called white man, you know, being in rulership. Yet, like the scripture says, nevertheless, the things that we're looking forward to is the kingdom, you know, we're in dwell of righteousness. And this is all according to the promise that Yahweh Shai gave us, all right, to inherit the earth, all right. And inherit an earth that's going to be righteousness where we can actually live in peace and harmony all right like we did prior to esau coming over here all right because it's going to go back to that when when esau goes down and, and we come back into rulership through the spirit of yahweh shim all right that's why this kingdom is going to be so beautiful and it's going to be an everlasting kingdom because in our kingdom that we're going to inherit 
that we're coming into is going to be nothing but righteousness dwelling there. Our people are not going to go off no more. All right. All of our people are going to be right, man. Serving Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, doing everything that they're meant to be doing. Okay. You know how the scriptures say in Micah 2 and 10, you know, this isn't our rest. So we can never be comfortable here. But when we're in the kingdom where it's going to be righteousness, everything is going to be so glorious and, and so high level, so spiritual. All right. This is when we're going to actually be able to be at rest and actually be able to enjoy life, you know, not have to worry about all the things you have to worry about now in this flesh or right, in this society that we're in today. That's why we always stay meditating upon the new earth. All right. We're in it's going to dwell that righteousness. And that's what I meditate upon often. All right. Not focusing on the things that we see now, because like the scriptures say, all oh, this is going to be dissolved, you know. All the things here that we see now is going to disappear. It's going to be a nightmare. All right. And then what we're going to come into is going to be if you, you think you have dreams now, you know, that are beautiful and that are nice. All right. Well, the kingdom is going to be like an everlasting dream almost, but it's going to be reality because it's going to be so beautiful and so righteous, man. All right. That's what we have to look forward to, man. And that's what we should be thinking about constantly. All right, that kingdom where it dwells righteousness and where our people are actually going to be in harmony with one another and not be having um, envy or strife or any of the other feelings that they have to one another. Now it's going to be the complete opposite, you know, when we're in the kingdom. All right, because everything is going to be done, you know, the right way. All right, the righteous way. Okay, so with that, I'm going to say Shalom Wam. Shalom Wam. This is Parathum Malak from the SF Bay Camp, and I'm going to speak on the promises of the kingdom. This is John 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in the Most High, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. We are going to inherit the planets and the galaxies, and that's going to make up the kingdom. That's where our many mansions are going to be at. This is Luke 12 and 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of the Most High, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasures to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approach, neither moth corrupt. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So what we're doing with right now is only temporal. You know, but the kingdom to come is going to be an everlasting kingdom. And one last precept, this is 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, is not slack concerning His promise. As some men count slackness, but His long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And Yahweh Shai is not a man that He should lie. Shalom, I'm the brother of Walker Bar. Just want to speak on the paradise to come, all right? Which is the kingdom of heaven. How will why how will shy's kingdom? All right. It's gonna be nothing but peace, okay? And tranquility, rest. All right. And a perfect order is gonna be established here on the planet Earth. All right. This is Saint Matthew chapter six, verse nine. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, all right, because the kingdom that we're in now, all right, this is the wicked's kingdom, all right, the Satan's kingdom. The scripture says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And what's going on in the heavens? All right, a perfect order, okay, peace, you know, and that's soon to come to the planet earth, all right. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. All right, and this is speaking about in Yahweh Shai's kingdom. Okay? And that perfect paradise that's soon to come, man, the earth is going to be turned back to Idan, to paradise. All right? Ecosystem is going to be perfect. It says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. All right? What company does the wolf and the lamb have now? None. The wolf 
will, will tear the lamb to shreds. Okay? When the kingdom to come, the wolf and the lamb are going to dwell together. Okay? It says, And the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion. All right, the calf and the young lion. A young lion will tear a young calf to shreds, man. Okay? When the kingdom to come, it's not going to be like that. It says, and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. Yeah, so a little Israelite child is going to lead all those, those, those animals, man. Those animals that are dangerous now. All right? Those animals who, who can't even be in the company of each other, let alone the company of a human being. All right? But in the kingdom to come, our little children are going to be leading those animals, man. You know? In the wilderness. All right? Out in the jungle. You know? says, and the cow and the bear shall feed, the young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The lion is going to eat straw like the ox, okay? Bears and cows are going to be together, you know? It's going to be that peaceful, okay? One of the titles of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, is the Prince of Peace, okay? And he's coming back to reestablish peace upon the earth, man. The kingdom to come is going to be nothing but peace. Can't even imagine that here, man. You know, a bear being in the midst of a cow, okay? A lion is, isn't going to eat fellow animals, you know? A lion is going to eat straw like the ox. It says, in the sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass. In the sucking child shall play on the hole of an ass. An ass is a poisonous snake, man. You know? And the winged child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. All right? And the winged child child that's maybe four or five okay he's gonna be able to put his hand on a snake's pit a snake's den a poisonous snake it's not gonna bite him okay it's not gonna harm him basically all the animals will be all of our pets man you know says so they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain all right so there's not gonna be no more hurt okay it's not gonna be no more pain it's not gonna be no more sorrow not gonna be no more confusion all right we're gonna be able to enjoy the earth all right earth is finally gonna be able to flourish animals are finally gonna be able to rest man every creature all right is waiting for this man you know since this will not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of yahweh bahashim yahweh shai as the waters cover the sea all right the earth is gonna be full of the knowledge of the lord all right the earth is going to be full of the knowledge of the lord man as the waters cover the sea there's no fear of the lord here now all right but in the kingdom to come everyone's going to know about yahweh by shim and house shine giving reverence and praise him man we're all going to sing unto the lord man all right it's going to be required that a hey, all nations serve us okay animals are going to be happy we're going to be just in a state of joy okay and that's what's gonna happen in the kingdom to come, man. And the fear of the Lord is gonna be established throughout all the earth. That must say, Shalom. Is Isaiah 60 and 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. You know, so the sons of strangers, meaning these other nations, shall build up our walls. You know, they're gonna build up our, our palaces. You know? You see the brother uh Manatazak does the uh, the art you know and other brothers in israel that does the art you know with the big palaces and all you know we're not going to be building any of that we're going to have put these heathens in the slaves and they're going to to build they're going to build the kingdom unto us it says and the king shall minister unto thee you look up this word minister it's sharat in hebrew you know meaning to minister to to serve no service, no a servant, you know? So they are going to build up our kingdom, man. You know? So it says, For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. You know? So we're serving out our, our captivity now, you know? Because we went off. We sinned against you, how about Shemel Shai? You know? But well, we serve, we're uh, at the very end of that right now. You know, but Yahweh Hashem is going to have mercy on us in the kingdom, man. And we're going to live eternally, you know. We're going to have be uh, replaced with those new bodies, 
you know, which going to have the law, statutes, and commandments built into them, you know, which we're not going to be able to go off again, you know. So it says, therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. You know, because there's not going to, like scriptures say, you know, there's not going to be any more war. You know, there's not going to be any more wars. There's not going to be no more uh, nuclear missiles or, or, or wars, man. There's not going to be any need for that. You know, it's, it's just going to be continual peace for us, man. You know, for eternal. But it says, uh, they shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be bought for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish yea those nations shall be utterly wasted you know so any nations that don't want to serve us you know you are so called Chinese you know which would be Moab you know you Ammonites and Japanese so called Japanese which are Ammonites you know you so-called East Indians, which are Elamites, you know, you don't want to serve us, you know, and all the other nations, man. You don't want to serve us. You're going to perish, man. You're going to be done away with, you know. And the kingdom, you're going to be forced. You know, you're going to be our servants. You're going to be our slaves, man. You know, things are going to be changed around. Shalom, Akim. This is the brother, Kornal Wath. And I'm just going to go into Tobit, uh, the 13th chapter. This is Tobit 13 and 7. I will extol my power and my soul shall praise the King of Heaven. And that's what we're doing, okay? We are exalting Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. We are praising Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, okay? And shall rejoice in His greatness. Let all men speak and let all praise Him for His righteousness. And that is what's going to happen in the Kingdom of Heaven, okay? All nations will praise Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, all right? And we're going to praise Yahweh Hashem Yahushai when he executes uh, judgment down here on the earth. When he executes his uh, righteous judgment. It says, O Jerusalem, the holy city. Okay, who, who is the holy city? The so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right, it says, O Jerusalem, the holy city. He will scourge thee for thy children's works. And that's what we're going through right now. We're being scourged for what we did in the past. Okay. Us breaking the covenant of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay, us uh, defiling ourselves by sacrificing unto these uh, dumb idols. Okay, accepting these uh, other spirits upon ourselves. All right. He says, O Jerusalem, the holy city, he will scourge thee for thy children's works and will have mercy again on the sons of the righteous. And that's what's going to happen. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is going to have mercy upon us. Okay. And that mercy begins, you know, right now with us being shown, okay, the kingdom, okay, us being able to understand the words that are in the scriptures, okay, and it's going to fully uh, uh, culminate when we enter into the kingdom of heaven, okay, that's the ultimate mercy that Yahweh Shem Yahushai is going to have on us, okay, because he's going to take us from this fallen state that we're in, and he's going to put us back in that state that we were in the beginning, okay, we're going to be the sons of the heavenly father again, all right. It says, give praise to the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, for he is good. And praise the everlasting king, that his tabernacle may be built in thee again with joy. And let him make it joyful there in thee, those that are captives, and love in thee forever, those that are miserable. Okay? Verse 11, it says, many nations shall come from far to the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, power with gifts in their hands. And this is what's going to happen in the kingdom. Okay? These other nations are going to be continually bringing gifts to Jerusalem, okay? Continually, all right? They're constantly going to be giving us gifts, all right? Bringing gifts to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, giving us their uh, gold, their silver, okay? Their uh, precious stones, fine linens, okay? Different uh, exotic spices, okay? Uh, uh, exotic uh, resins. And we're going to uh, consecrate these things to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, all right? It says, many nations shall come from far to the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, power with gifts in their hands, even gifts to the King of Heaven. All generations shall praise thee with great joy. Verse 12, it says, cursed are all they which hate thee, and blessed shall all be which love thee forever. Okay, because Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is going to exalt those that love him and love his way. Okay, 
And what, what, what is going to be uh, that blessing? You're going to be set up as kings and rulers of the earth. All right, you're going to have these other nations uh, bow down to you. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to exalt us on a high level. And this is what the kingdom of heaven uh, is going to consist of. Okay. These other nations bow down, worshiping us. Okay. Us serving Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai perfectly. Him bestowing uh, favor and mercy upon us. All right. It says, Rejoice and be glad for the children of the just, for they shall be gathered together and shall bless the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai of the just. Okay, and that's what's going on. All right, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is gathering together the children of the just. The children of the just is the remnant of the nation of Israel. We're being gathered together so Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai can give us the kingdom. Okay. Verse 14, it says, Oh, blessed are they which love thee, for they shall rejoice in thy peace. And that's what Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to give us. It's going to give us peace on all sides. You ain't going to have no nation coming up against us, trying to put us down, trying to put us in slavery. Okay. Ain't no wild beast going to be coming up against us, ripping us up. Okay. No no uh, storms are going to hit us. No earthquakes. Okay. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to give us peace on all sides. We're not going to have to worry about any of these things that's going on down here now. Okay. It says, Oh, blessed are they which love thee, for they shall rejoice in thy peace. Which this is talking about the kingdom of heaven. We're going to be rejoicing in the kingdom. Blessed are they which have been sorrowful for all thy scourges. And that's talking about the elect. All right. It says, For they shall rejoice for thee when they have seen all thy glory and shall be glad forever. Why? Because the kingdom is going to be an everlasting kingdom. Okay. We're never going to be taken down. We're never going to have to deal with anything like this ever again. Okay, we'll never be in this state ever again. All right, separated from our power. Okay, cast off, uh, you know, into our enemy's land. Scattered amongst the heathen. Okay, not knowing who we are. We're never going to have to deal with this again. We're going to have that uh, connection with Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai forevermore. Okay. It says, let my soul bless thee. Uh, power the great king for Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphires and emeralds Okay, and this is literal. All right, the most high is going to beautify the kingdom Okay, he's going to beautify the city of Jerusalem The walls are going to be built up and they're going to have sapphires emeralds in them. These are precious stones Okay, you, these are literally going to be in the walls Okay, and you have to imagine that imagine Sapphires and, and, and emeralds, you know and other precious stones inside walls built by the gold man Okay, that's part of the glory that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to bestow upon us. You, you've never seen that anywhere on the earth, man. Okay, no other nation has, has, has uh, you know, uh, done this before, built a city out of pure gold and, and, and embedded uh, precious stones inside of the walls, man. Okay, had, had streets paved with gold. Okay, these are the things that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai has prepared for us. All right. It says, for Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphires and emeralds and precious stones. Okay, thy walls and towers and battlements with pure gold. So the walls are going to be made out of pure gold. The towers in Jerusalem, okay, that are on the walls are going to be made out of pure gold. Okay, and the battlements, you know, the battlement is a little wall that goes, uh, uh, you know, at the end of a, a wall. Okay, so you build a wall, you have the, the flat surface where people walk on, and then you have a battlement to prevent people from uh, falling off uh, the top of the of the walkway, okay, or the top of the roof. So everything is going to be built out of gold, all right? And this this is this is what Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai has uh, promised to us, okay? And he's going to make good on his promise. And this is part of the blessing that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to bestow upon us. This is one of the reasons why we're going to be rejoicing daily, man. The Most High, like the scriptures say, he's going to make us an eternal excellency. Okay? He's going to show these other nations that he is exalting us, that we're his people. Okay? And this kingdom is going to last forever. Ain't no nation going to come up and then try to take gold out, out the wall. Okay? No other nation is going to try to tear the wall down and then, then carry the gold off, you know, put it in their temples like they d uh, have done in the past. Okay? That's not going to happen anymore. All right? It says, For Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphires and emeralds and precious stones, thy walls and towers and battlements with pure gold. And the streets of Jerusalem shall be paved with barrel and carbuncle and stones of Ophir. Okay? And barrel... You know, that's pretty much uh, like a ruby. 
Okay, it's a red stone. Carbuncle is a, is a yellow stone. Okay, so these are literally gonna be embedded inside of the streets. Okay, so on the walls, you're gonna have sapphires, uh, emeralds, other precious stones, you know, throughout, throughout the entire border of Jerusalem, man. Okay, and then when you walk inside the city, the, the streets that we walk on, they're gonna be paved with gold, and they're gonna have precious stones inside of them as well. Okay, this is the glory that Yahweh Shem Shai has prepared for us. Okay, it says, And the streets of Jerusalem shall be paved with barrel and carbuncle and stones of Ophir, and all her streets shall say, Hallelujah, which is praise Yahweh Shem Shai. Okay. And they shall praise him, saying, Blessed be the Most High, which hath extolled it forever. And that's exactly what's going to happen. We're going to continually praise Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai for the goodness that he's going to do unto us. And the mercy that he's going to bestow upon us. Okay? By giving us this glorious kingdom. All right? Okay, Shalom. I'm the brother Yahweh Yahweh. And I want to um, I want to go into the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 2, starting at verse 10. It reads, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, unto Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. That's right, because we, um, according to Deuteronomy, the, uh, the 28th chapter, starting with the 15th verse on down, um, we went off from the law, statute, and commandments of the Heavenly Father as a nation. So what? The curses uh, uh, befell us. And we were um, scattered throughout the uh, throughout the earth that's why that's why you have remnants of jacob uh, uh, uh all over the earth and, and really spread out through um throughout the nations you may you you're, you're gonna have an israelite that look like a heathen but their father's side uh goes all the way back to abraham isaac and jacob just just um um just the outward appearance so it says uh thus saith the lord unto ezra tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of, of Jerusalem. That's right, because the Lord said in uh, St. Luke, the 12th chapter, uh, uh, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. All right, you know, and it says, tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. That's right, because like it says in um, Isaiah, I believe the 10th chapter, all right, though Israel is as the sand of the sea, only a remnant uh, shall return, okay? Because uh, two-thirds of Israel is, is going to die here in the land of America, all right? You know, only uh, uh, one-third in uh, uh, the elect, ultimately, the 144,000 and the one-third are going to be delivered, all right? They're going to be a part of the first fruits, the first resurrection, all right? And that's what that's what we are we're striving for, okay? For salvation, ultimately, for deliverance, all right? And the Lord, the Lord uh, uh, is going to give it unto his faithful servants. Okay. So it says, thus saith the Lord unto Ezra, tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Their glory also will I take unto me and give these the everlasting tabernacles, which I have prepared for them. That's right. Talking about what? Them brand new bodies. Okay. Because according to Jude, we left our... Uh, um, our heavenly tabernacle and what and we were placed in these uh, uh corruptible flesh are right? these everlasting chain of darkness all right these this flesh that is uh, uh um subject to sin all right you know and that's that's a major part of the battle that that we uh, uh we we uh, we fight daily okay the battle between the flesh and the spirit because the flesh is weak and 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 um and desperately wicked all right like it says in jeremiah the 17th chapter yet the spirit is willing all right this is a spiritual battle that we're fighting man okay so it says um uh, uh their glory also will i take unto me and give these the everlasting tabernacles which i have prepared for them that's right the lord has those brand new bodies awaiting uh, uh his elect okay like the apostle paul he speaks about in second corinthians the fifth chapter about this earthly uh, uh tabernacle that we're in now these fleshly bodies because the body goes back to the word abode, all right, which means uh, which means house, okay. So our spirits are in these uh, cor uh, corruptible flesh, all right, these fleshly earthly uh, 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 tabernacles. So the Lord, the Lord is going to uh, uh, change us. Lord's will from our apostles and elders on down will be of that hopeful number, and that's what we strive for. And we're and we're that we're that we're closer than ever, Akim, okay, you know.
So it says, Their glory also will I take unto me and give these the everlasting tabernacles which I have prepared for them. That's right. Because uh, uh, as it refers to in Hebrews, the eighth chapter, the Lord is going to put the, uh, the law in our inward parts, okay? The Lord is going to give us uh, 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 brand new bodies to where it's going to be impossible for us to sin. Therefore, what? We'll never go off. We'll never die. We're going to live forever, man. And we're, we're going to be always uh, uh, in good graces with Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. And that's what we long for. And, and that's how, and that's what we're, uh, what we're about to receive, Akim. Okay? Continuing on, verse 12. It says, they shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. They shall neither labor nor be weary. That's why we're laboring right now, okay? As it says in Hebrews, we're laboring to enter into our rest. Because as it says in Micah, the second chapter, this is not our rest, okay? And in the kingdom, we're not going to have to work. Can you fathom that? <laughs> not, not even lifting a finger, all right? Whatever you want to do, you're going to be able to do it, man. You want to rest, <laughs> all right? You want to sleep. You want to eat. You want to get a uh, uh, drink. Be cheerful. You want to. You want to spend time with your wives, with your children, all right? Kick it with the Akiyam, okay? You're going to be able to do that. You're going to have servants, handmaids, concubines, all right? Uh, uh, a limited amount of wealth. That's what. That's what we have approaching us, all right? Rest, okay? Tranquility, okay? A peace of mind and spirit. All right, verse 13 it says, Go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you. That's right, and that's what we pray for. Okay, and, and um, the scriptures speak about the spirit groaning and making intercession for our bodies, man. For, for the uh, uh, the things that we go to in our day to day uh, uh, um, hell. <laughs> okay, you know, and the Lord hears our prayers, as it says, Saint Luke. Okay. You know, shout out the Most High Avengers, very elect, who cried day and night um, unto him. All right. That's why we give the Lord no rest until he gives us rest, man. All right. And we're that close to to, to, uh, to rest it, not him. All right. You know, we're at the finish line of this thing. Okay. So it says, pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened. Mm -hmm. Like it says in St. Matthew, the 24th chapter, at least those days be shortened. Uh, there be no flesh to be saved by by how things are, are, are getting so wicked and, and, and just death is all around us, man. Okay. Yet it says for the elect uh, for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened and everything's moving quickly. Okay. Everything is speaking. Okay. Like it says in Habakkuk, the second chapter prophecy is being fulfilled at an all time high. Okay. Our redemption is, is, is closer than we, we ever imagined. Okay. It says, uh, pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. That's right. The Lord already has the kingdom prepared. And that's why Esau keeps finding new planets. All right. New creations because what? The Lord is always creating. And he's not doing that for Esau. That's why Esau hasn't been able to inhabit these new planets. Okay. Because it's not for him. All right. And he, he don't have... The tabernacle to, to uh to travel that uh, uh that distance okay the lord is preserving that for his elect ultimately for the nation of israel man okay you know so it says the kingdom is already prepared for you watch that's the point we have to maintain and stay on our watch okay you know hey we have to finish what we started akim and we're at the finish line so guess what it's time to kick it in gear man all right we almost out of here, you know, the kingdom is at hand, hey, and the kingdom is already prepared, you know, so with that, I'm going to say Shalom. All right, Shalom, it's your brother Kanak. All right, uh, I'm going to speak about the kingdom, and I'm going to read Isaiah 14, uh, 1 through 3, and uh, speak about how, you know, we're going to be putting it back in our land, in the kingdom of heaven, and this is going to happen very soon, okay, in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to possess you know, uh, servants. This is part of Yabashima Shai's, you know, uh, gift to us. You know, this is part of our inheritance, you know, for, you know, keep pushing on, uh, keep believing. All right, we're going to inherit all things. All right. So this is Isaiah 14 and 1, where the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Okay, Jacob is Israel. 
and will yet choose Israel are you black, Hispanic, and, and Native Americans. All right? You have always been the chosen people. Okay? And that has never changed. And will set them in their own land. Right now, we're in, we're in foreign lands. Okay? We're in foreign lands being called strangers, being called by different names. But when that time comes, all right, the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, he's going to put us back in our land, his favorite land. Okay? For his favorite people. And the strangers shall be joined with them. See, the strangers. Now, this these strangers are not talking about, uh, you know, non-Israelites. These are actually Israelites. But they're being called by different names. All right? The Israelite foreigners. And they're going to be joined unto the body of Israel. Okay? Because you have Israel that's scattered throughout the whole planet Earth. Okay? Catching, you know, catching hell. Okay? Being called by different names looking like the other nations and this is part of the curses yet the heavenly father yabash Shai, it, it says in the, in the first you know line that he was going to have mercy upon jacob okay so he's going to have mercy upon the israelite foreigners the strangers as well as he's having mercy upon us and they shall cleave to the house of jacob okay so that's going to be the time where the nation of israel is going to be gathered okay as an entirety all right and uh and be one people okay the north the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom uh, verse two and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of israel shall possess them in the land of the lord Yahbashimashai, for servants and handmaids and this is going to be in the kingdom of heaven now think about that okay you not having to do anything okay you have servants waiting on you all right for every little thing okay they're cleaning your quarters okay they're they're making your food they're taking care of your children okay they're taking care of your vineyard okay you you will never have to do anything in the kingdom of heaven and this is part of the inheritance of being an israelite okay and that's why we keep pushing on so we can receive this okay and that's going to be a beautiful thing okay because right now we are in the lands Okay, uh, catching pure hell. Yet, Yahweh Shemashai, he's going to turn back our captivity. Okay, let me continue. And they shall take them captives who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Right now, we're being oppressed. Okay, whether you're in America, whether you're in uh, Africa, whether you're in China, okay, being an Israelite, you're being oppressed. And who is uh, oppressing you? Well, the, the first nation that's oppressing you is the nation of Edom. Okay, right along with all the other nations, the, all, all the other heathen nations. They are oppressing us to this day. Okay, they have us in captivity. They have us in bondage. They have us as uh, servants. Yet, Yahweh is so just that he's going to actually turn that upon their own heads. All the things that they have done to us, those things are going to be done to them. And this is this is how uh, the kingdom of heaven is going to be set up all right, on earth. OK, we're going to be in our own land. OK, nobody's going to be able to take your land. Nobody's going to be able to take your children away from you. OK, you're going to have plenty uh, of food, plenty of wine, plenty of, of substances. And all these things are going to be given to you by Yahweh Shemashah. And how is he going to uh, give those things to you? Well, through servants. Okay, so that's one thing that we have to hope for. And, 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 and you know, we have hope in, rather. We have hope in, okay? And that puts a smile on our face knowing that Yahweh Shemashah is not going to leave us here in America and throughout all the lands that we have been scattered, okay? And, and be oppressed to this day. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. So everywhere uh, Israel Israelite is at, okay, they have sorrow. Okay, we are in a sorrowful state. Okay, the majority of us don't know who we are. Okay, we, we are being oppressed. Okay, and we, we can go into many different avenues of why we're rep uh, oppressed and how we're oppressed. Yet, okay there's going to come a day when we're not going to be oppressed anymore we're going to be the oppressors okay so we're not going to have sorrow okay in our spirit anymore and from thy fear okay we're not going to be fearful anymore fearful for our lives 
not uh not knowing what's going to uh, happen okay uncertain okay everything is going to be beautiful in that day and this is going to be in the kingdom of heaven this is something that we have waiting for us okay as rulers we have a, a, a crown waiting for us okay and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve okay so we were made to serve you know hard bondage by the hands of our enemies you know for a moment and that moment is damn near done okay and then we're going to be placed in our land okay and we're going to have everlasting joy okay uh thus said the scriptures thus said yah Shai, and he's not a man that he shall lie all right so shalom shalom akim it's the brother Manatazak, and i want to get into the book of revelations the 21st chapter starting at the 10th verse because our kingdom is going to be spectacular our kingdom is going to be out of this world like the scriptures say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what the Most High prepared for them that love Him and that wait for Him. Our kingdom is going to be glorious. The kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Shai, the kingdom of righteousness. This is Revelations chapter 21, verse 10. And He carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from the Most High. Now we know that Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Jerusalem represents you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, which are the biblical Israelites, which starts with his elect, the 144,000, which is the foundation of the Most High. It says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from the Most High which is talking about the elect, the 144,000 coming out of them chariots because they have just escaped the judgments of the Most High, which is that thermonuclear destruction that the Heavenly Father reigned on the wicked. And they're gonna come down from heaven, from them chariots with Yahweh Shai and rule this earth in righteousness and set up a glorious kingdom, enslave all the heathen nations and set up righteousness on this planet earth. Revelations chapter 21 verse 11 Having the glory of the Most High And her light was like unto a stone most precious Even like a jasper stone Clear as crystal And had a wall great and high And had twelve gates And at the gates twelve angels And names written thereon Which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel So our kingdom is going to be spectacular out of this world. We're going to have 12 gates surrounding our cities. We're also going to have 12 angels guarding our cities. And we're also going to have the names of the 12 tribes of Israel written in the walls. Revelation chapter 21 verse 13. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So the walls are going to have the names of the 12 apostles written in them. Because that's the foundation. It starts with Yahweh Shai and on down to the 12th. Because the Most High deals with order. And order will be established on the earth. Like the scriptures say, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's complete order in the heavens. So complete order will be established on the earth in righteousness. The kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. Revelations 21 and 15. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof and the city leaf four score and the length is as large as a breath. And he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. He measured the wall thereof 144 cubits according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. So our kingdom is going to be out of this world. Revelations 21 and 18. And the building of the wall of it was as jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. So we're going to have a city made of pure gold. It's going to be spectacular out of this world. Revelations 21 and 19. 
and the foundation of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. So we're going to have a city, palaces, mansions made of precious stones, precious gold, you know, out of this world. Like the scriptures say, eyes have not seen nor ears have heard. This is the kingdom to come. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh kingdom. Revelations 21 and 19. And the foundation of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper. The second, sapphire. The third, a chalcedony. The fourth, an emerald. The fifth, sardonyx. The sixth, sardius. The seventh, crystallite. The eighth, burl. The ninth, a topaz. The tenth, a chrysopersis. The eleventh, a jacinth. The twelfth, an amethyst. So we're going to have a city of very precious, very rare stones. We're going to have stones in abundance, gold in abundance. Our kingdom is going to be out of this world. Spectacular. Revelations 21 and 21. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gates was of one pearl. And the streets of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. So we're gonna have streets paved with pure gold as if it were transparent glass, you know? Our kingdom is gonna be out of this world. This is the kingdom of the Israelites. The kingdom of righteousness. Yahweh by Shem Shai's kingdom. Revelations 21 and 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord, Yahweh Almighty, and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of the Most High did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof, which is talking about Yahweh Shai. You want to be joined back with him, joined unto the Lamb. And we have no need for the sun nor moon, which that represents the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, because we're going to have them brand new bodies. The Most High is going to program us to be righteous. We're still going to have the sun and the moon play their part on the earth. But that's in representation of righteousness, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The light of Yahweh Bashim Shai is going to be in us, which is going to make our kingdom an everlasting kingdom. This kingdom to come is forever. It's paradise. And it's given to Yahweh Shai and Yahweh Shai's elect, which are joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. Revelations 21 and 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, because we're going to collect all the resources of these heathen nations. They're going to be bringing their gold, their silver, their finest wine, their finest apparel. Our kingdom is going to be spectacular out of this world. Revelations 21 and 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that is defiled, neither whatsoever worketh abominations or make of a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So this kingdom is prepared for the Heavenly Father's elect. Yahweh Bashim Shah is chosen. Yahweh Shah is coming back on the earth to get his glory on the earth, and his elect will be joint heirs with him. Our kingdom will be spectacular out of this world. So with that, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakal Kodash, Shalom.